In this video, I want to go over a easy, a medium, as well as a hard example for solving two-step equations. Now, I'm going to work through this step by step, but I'm also going to highlight why two-step equations can be difficult or where students make mistakes. So if you're ready, let's go and get into it. Now, the first one we need to definitely cover is going to be the easy, the easy example for solving a two-step equation. This is essential to understanding how to solve equations, right? Now we're past the one step, right? And the reason why this is called two steps is because it's going to theoretically take you two steps to go ahead and solve. So in this example, I have two X plus three is going to equal to nine. What we want to do is we want to find the value of X. Now, a lot of times when we're dealing with two step equations, you might be able to do the math in your head, right? You might be able to do the guess and check, but what we're trying to get you to understand is to use this process of in reverse order of operations and inverse operations, properties of equality to go ahead and solve for X because problems will get more difficult, not even just in two-step equations, but problems will get more difficult. So understanding how to use inverse operations, the reverse order of operations and properties of equality is really, really going to be helpful for you. So when I look at this, if I want to get my X all by itself, right? I want to isolate it. I want to undo everything that's being applied to the X. So I need to understand, well, what is being applied to the X right now? I have a two that's being multiplied by it and I'm adding a three. So when we're using our inverse operations, we want to follow that reverse order of operations, right? So if you remember PEMDAS or GEMDAS, right? We're going to use the reverse order of that. So what I want to do is I want to undo the operation of addition and subtraction before I undo the operation of multiplication and division. So to undo addition, I need to subtract a three. Now, again, remember whatever you do on one side, you have to make sure you do on the other side. That is going to be our properties of equality. So when I subtract a three, when I add three and then subtract three, that's just going to leave me with a two X and then nine minus uh, three is going to give me a six. Now you can see my X is being multiplied by two to undo multiplication. I'm going to have to use division. So I'm going to divide on two on the left as well as on the right side. And now I'm going to get a final answer of X is equal to three. I cannot stress to you how important it is. Just like when we're dealing with your know, multiplication tables or adding and later on with factoring, like doing multiple of the multiple of these examples um, is really going to give you a strong foundation. That's going to give you confidence. Um, confidence for, for more difficult math topics. And don't worry, I have something for you at the end of this video on that. So number two, let's go over some still two step equations, but where students can get confused. And I want to highlight a couple of these because it's really not a difficult problem, but students will make mistakes. So in this one, you can see there's quite a bit of negatives and where students will kind of make mistakes is again, understanding what are the operations that are being applied to my X. You might say, well, yeah, it's being multiplied by two, right? But this four is like, am I subtracting the two? Is this a positive four or a negative four? So the way, the way I like to tell my students to do this is always rewrite it in this format, right? I want the X first and then my constant. So here's what we have to make sure we are. If we're going to be rearranging things, we need to make sure we keep those signs the same. This is a negative two times X. So I need to rewrite this as a negative two X. Now the four does not have a plus or a negative in front of it, right? So we, it's going to be presumed that is going to be a positive because the only way that we would write this as a negative, if there was literally a negative sign in front of it or a subtract four, which we don't have. So therefore we can conclude that it is a positive four. So now I have my equation written like this. Okay. But a lot of students will just like see this negative or they don't, they don't, see like a plus four and minus four. So maybe they might assume that's a negative and, and that can be a crucial mistake because when we look at solving for X here, when we understand our operations, yeah, we're adding a four, right? And we're multiplying by a negative two. Now, again, going back to what we did up here, the first operation we need to do is undo addition and subtraction. So therefore I'm going to subtract a four on both sides. Now, again, the negatives get students confused all the time. So negative 10 minus four, right? So what I always like to tell students is when we're dealing with negatives, a lot of times just think of it as money, right? So negative means you owe me money and subtracting would be like borrowing more money. So let's say you owe me $10 and you're going to borrow four more dollars. How much money do you have? Some students will write that in as negative six, but it's not. If you owe me $10 and you borrow four more dollars, you now owe me $14. Okay. So it's very, very important to make sure that you um, have that kind of strength with your negative numbers. And then again, just like kind of the first example, I have my X is being multiplied by negative two. 
So I need to divide by negative two, right? Because we not only want to get rid of the two, we also want to get rid of the negative. And what's important about when we multiply or divide with negatives, that's now going to turn to a positive. So when I multiply or divide by negative two on both sides, that's just going to leave me with a positive X, which I, again, which I'm trying to isolate. And then over here, a negative 14 divided by negative two is also going to give me a positive seven. All right, now let's get into our hard example. Now, technically we could solve this as a two-step equation, but I'm actually going to add it into a three-step equation, okay? So um, even though that's, you know, you could use it with two-step equation, and I'll explain the difference of why I'm gonna use this as a three-step equation rather than a two-step equation. Because if you're gonna use this as a two-step equation, you would have to use, oh, what am I doing? Uh, I, th I don't think I added, why did I add an extra? Yeah, sorry about that. That's not supposed to be there. Let's uh, rewrite that, sorry. I just wrote it down wrong. Um, two fifths equals three fourths. Okay, so if you wanted to solve this using a two-step equation, you would have to undo your addition and subtraction, but that means would add a two fifths to both sides, and then you need to undo multiplication of one fourth by dividing by one fourth on both sides, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you can do it. And if I was teaching inside the classroom, I would show both methods because I want students to be comfortable with fractions. But I also want to be pragmatic. I also want to be realistic and understand that a lot of students, including myself when I was a student, as well as even a teacher, I recognize just like with negatives, students will make mistakes. With fractions, students are going to make mistakes. It's just an easy way to go ahead and confuse you. So what I always like to do is say, yeah, we can work with this with fractions and I want you to be comfortable with fractions, but I also want you to realize that you can also get rid of the fractions and not have to worry about them at all. So to get rid of the fractions, what we need to be able to do is understand, well, how can I just get rid of them? To get rid of a fraction, you need to find something that your denominator evenly divides into. For instance, let me show you this. If I have eight divided by two, that's a fraction. I have a numerator and a denominator. However, my denominator evenly divides into my numerator, right? Four times. Now I can rewrite this as an, as an integer and not a fraction. So what I want to do is be able to say, all right, what is the smallest number that four and five all evenly divide into? Because four happens twice, right? So you don't need to do it twice. You just need to do it once. What is the smallest number that four and five evenly divide into? That is what we call our least common denominator. And if you think about the multiples of four and five, hopefully you come up to the number 20. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything by 20. Because when you multiply a fraction times a, uh, a integer, that integer is gonna go in the numerator. You can always think of that as like 20 over one, right? You can think of this as, so if I had 20, that's the same thing as 20 over one, right? So when I'm multiplying a 20 over one times all these fractions, this is what I'm gonna get. I'm spending a lot of time on the fractions, but again, it's, it's something where a lot of students just make their mistakes. So I have one fourth you, um, x, and then a minus a two fifths is equal to a three over a four. Now, again, let's write in the 20 because you got to make sure you multiply everything times 20 over one, right? So 20 over one, that's a bad 20. I'll put those in parentheses so we don't get it. So 20 over one, boom. I don't like how that looks. So let's go ahead and clean that up. So we'll do the minus and then we'll multiply that by 20 over one. Okay. Now again, remember, four evenly divides into 20. How many times? Four divides into 20 five times, right? So I can simplify this as to 20 over four divided by one fourth is the same thing as five. And then five times one is just going to be a five. So now I'm going to, no, I don't want red. Now I'm just going to have a five X. So that's going to be a five X. Five evenly divides into 20 four times. Four times two is going to be a eight. So that's a minus a eight. And then over here, four divides into 25 times. Five times three is going to be a 15. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a two-step equation, right? So now I can go ahead and solve this. So when I do that, I'm going to add an eight to both sides. And because I want to undo, right, addition and subtraction. So to undo subtracting eight, I got to add eight on both sides. In that case, I'm going to give a 5x is going to equal a 23. Now I need to undo multiplication by five, so I'm going to divide by a five on both sides. And unfortunately, in this example, five does not evenly divide into 23, but that is okay. 
right? I can rewrite, I can leave my answer as an improper fraction. I know sometimes we get kind of programmed into always having nice numbers, right? The nice numbers show up on our test, they show up in our textbook. But it's also important to understand like, hey, go back and check your work, make sure you didn't make a mistake, right? And if you don't see that you checked a mistake, 23 over five, it's a number, right? So don't hate on it. Now, I only went over three examples, but ladies and gentlemen, if you want more examples of practicing solving two-step equations, then I have a free worksheet that you can go ahead and download below. I also have more videos on a, showing you how to solve uh, linear equations, as well as working through easy, medium, hard. Those are gonna be in playlist down below or the next video I have for you here. Cheers.